Yeah, hello, hello, this is Patty Jo. I am picking up where I left off yesterday. Um, I went to the movies with my sisters. I had a great time. Um, we saw Argyle, by the way. I had a good time. I liked it. Okay, I backed this up a little bit. We are going to be kind of in the middle of the state's questioning of this gentleman. He um, has basically gone through each exhibit and circled in or outlined each of the members, which, you know, shockingly, he knows so many of them by sight and reasonably because of the way photos are of groups of people, especially during exciting times, you don't always get best angles or something. And there were a few that were not like a hundred percent. And of course, Daryl jumped all over that and you know, whatever. But we're going to get to a little bit more of the questioning of what he saw. And somebody, somebody commented that this is old, and that is true. This is not a new thing. Daryl is old news. But um, I will say that when this came out, I couldn't do this right away because it really sparked some trauma in my past. I stopped working at the fire department because of some of the issues that I had there. Um, and you know, people say, well, they're mentally ill. It doesn't excuse it. And I really had a hard time watching the trial at first, not until after I knew the outcome and a little bit of time passed, was I able to go through and really do this. And now as I'm watching it with all of you, I feel first of all, that we're kind of, a few, we mostly agree on things. Sometimes we don't, but lots of great points when we don't, when people don't agree. Um, and very respectful, which I really, really like for the most part. And I feel like I don't need to watch it again. Like I'm not drawn to it again. Like when it comes up on my feeds and stuff, it's not something that I like click on anymore, except for maybe if I want to drone myself to sleep on it. Um, fun fact, I don't own a television. This is like my kind of entertainment. I I stream occasionally. I don't have streaming services either. Like I don't have Hulu or I don't even have YouTube TV or anything like that. I don't have any of those things. I, I just have regular old YouTube and I seek out new stories on my own on the internet. That's how I do it. Um, I don't have the, you know, any other types of things like that. All right. So as we, as I moved into this a little further, I could see that you know, because he was the group in front of the dancing grannies, this is going to get a little bit, um, I think hard to watch for me, but, um, let's, let's move on. I feel really bad because he obviously, it was, it traumatized him. So let's, let's move on and see what, what he has to say and how. And when, did you look back does and you, you said you'd look back and saw the red SUV, correct? Yeah. But, uh, the way I would describe it is if the car would have hit me, it would have hit me. Um, I kind of saw it as it was entering into our group. And the two um, impacts that you heard, did you see those impacts? My mind blocks that part out of it. So I couldn't say who was, who was hit in those impacts. What I could say is that my next encounter was that there were three people from our group that I, I don't believe would have been the ones with impact that were lying more or less right in my my immediate path. So two right in front of you on the right hand side of the street yep. as you testified? On, on the right hand side. Those are the first, the, the, the three people that I was right by then. And before that car went through were those? What was this? That I don't believe would have been the ones with impact that were lying more or less right in my my I'm not path. touching anything like this. I don't so know So two right in front of you on the right hand side of the street yep. as you testified? On, on the right hand side. Those are the first, the, the, the three people that I was right by then. And before that car went through, were those three people on the ground? Definitely not. Where did this impact take place? Do you know approximately where on the parade route? Yeah, so it was, it would have been past Curry Insurance. There would have been, um, I believe it's Main Street Bar and Grill, and then there's kind of an unnamed bar, and then there's Planned Parenthood. So th those would be the, the, it's kind of a Main Street, between Main Street and un, kind of unnamed bars, where I would, where it happened. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked and admitted into evidence as State's Exhibit 15. Um, it will not only be, I'd ask that it be published as well. 
Go ahead. Um, Objection, how many times do you need to publish the same picture? Oh. My. God. Stupid. She can show it to as many people as she wants. How many times do you get Objection. Is that the legal argument? How many times are we going to look at the same picture? I'm a doof. Noted it's overruled. She's uh, on this picture, there are... Um, different groups that appear to be on this picture. Can you describe, does this, what does this appear to be a map of? Yeah, that would be Main Street. Um, that, that'd be the, our groups, all the, all, you know, the groups of the-, the I'm gonna pause it because I, I don't want it to flip off of there. But I did not realize this. Look at how many people from, the. this is the group with the dancing grannies, we know, because red means um, that they didn't make it. But look at how many of the people were hit. I mean, by the time he was hitting and killing people, basically, he hit everybody. I mean, this group was a big group. I get it. But look at how many people he hit. And look at how many same families. Like, these are the same last names. That's the same family that that he hit. And he hit all of He just ran over every, like, indiscriminately at this point. Parade. And, and you I, see uh, your group on this map? I do. Would it be in the left hand side of the of exhibit fifteen? Objection, leading the witness. Sustain, uh, hold on. Sustain, please rephrase. Sure. Do, where would you see you said you saw your group. Where do you see your group on this map? Uh, on this map, our group is furthest to my my left. Can you circle it? And that would be in that arrow, or I'm sorry, that star that you circled, that is attached to a list of names. Is that correct? Objection, leading the witness. Sustained, please rephrase. Yes. Is there, do you see a list of names and an arrow on that map? Objection, leading the witness. Overruled, you may answer. I do. And where does that, um, do you recognize the names that are on that map? Objection, leading the witness. Overruled, you may answer. Yep, I, I recognize all those names. Okay, okay. So we need a little spinny wheel, like a game. Uh, somebody mentioned that, and, and that was my answer. He probably does it by spinny wheel. He just guesses. He had a couple that were sustained because it was leading. They were leading questions, and apparently she cannot lead when she does her first set of questions unless it is foundational but he can lead when he cross-examines it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is just stuff I'm picking up. So he, he had a few that were sustained and then he's gonna stick with it. It's kind of like doing rock, paper, scissors and a couple of them won, and then he's just gonna keep sticking with it. God, what it's stupid. And it appears that approximately how, or how many names are, are on that list? Objection, leading the witness. Overruled. See? Nineteen. Just because you don't want to use. <laughs> um, and were all those people, to your knowledge, um, injured as a result of being struck by or indirectly struck by the vehicle in the parade? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. You may answer. Said to his knowledge. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Um, we can take Exhibit 15 now. So when you looked around and saw the red SUV, was there, did you hear the impacts first or did you see the red SUV you first? Know. I, I saw the, the red SUV just uh, flying on the left side. I mean, flying is a relative word, but it was... Moving quickly. You know, going fast in my, it was going faster than anyone in their right mind would be driving in that scenario. Did you estimate the speed? Listen to him. Objection, hearsay. Overrule. You may answer. From being on that street and other occasions and kind of walking over there, you know, the speed limit is 25. I, I, the car, in my estimation, was going faster than I would see a car driving in normal times down that street. So in excess of 25 miles per hour? Objection, hearsay. Leave the witness. Uh, not hearsay. It's a clarification question. Um, your objection noted. It's overruled. You may answer. I, 
I would say yes. He is starting to panic, saying just everything. He he's not he's playing rock paper scissors and spinning the game wheel of his objections because he just doesn't want this guy seeing anymore. Because he he was literally knows he was running over people indiscriminately on purpose. Now, when you said that you saw the uh, the red SUV coming to your left, I know you described your path of travel being on the right side exactly. of the road. Um, so it's to the left of you. Would it be more towards the, the middle of your group or to the left of your group? Or on the left-hand side of your group? I would say it was on my left. Okay. So you're not sure how far away it was when it passed you? No, it was, it was on my left. I was not struck. It was on my left. It wasn't... Uh, he doesn't know. He just doesn't he's seen know. He's driving the vehicle. Okay, so there's another situation where he's so traumatized, he just doesn't know. He can't quantify or qualify exactly what's going on in that memory. I did not. It's traumatizing. After the vehicle, did the vehicle um, go past your group? Did it drive past your group? I, I believe it did. I um, I saw it just fly by, and my intention immediately was drawn towards the, the three people that were on the ground in my vicinity. After the car went by, did you ever see the car stop? I I simply uh, I saw the car fly by, and then the next thing I knew, there were there were three people in front of me on the ground. So my attention right there. Did you see anyone else on the ground? after the car passed, other than the three people you initially saw? Uh, there are other, you know, so all around them, there are different kind of, as time played out, kind of pockets of people. Can you describe who you saw after the car went through who appeared to be injured? So the three, the three people that were uh, in my path were Father Patrick Heppy, and then Maria Perez, and William Bill Mitchell. Did they all appear to be injured? Yes. And did you meet with those people um, after the parade? Did you talk to them or meet with them? Yeah, so I my attention was really drawn towards uh, those three that were kind of right there. Father Pat was, uh, he was kind of completely knocked out, and then he kind of came to, and he was kind of put on the side of the road. And then I more or less stayed by Maria Perez on the side. She was in agonizing pain. There were some other people that came. William Mitchell was also there, also with severe injuries and major pain. So I more or less stayed there. And then Father Pat and I, we, uh, uh, being priests, we live in the same, we call it the rectory or the house. So when he went into the hospital, I, I joined him to go. And then so my next immediate experience was uh, going to the hospital and then encountering more of the people that were in our group who were already at the hospital. So the three people you had direct contact with would have been uh, Maria Perez, William Mitchell, or Bill Mitchell, and Father Heppy. That's correct. Um, I believe that's what his testimony just was. It, correct. It's overruled. And you went to which hospital? So Father Pat was taken by a squad to Waukesha Memorial, so I, I joined them in going to that, that hospital. Did you see any of the people that you had observed on that list on Exhibit 15 at Waukesha Memorial Hospital? Yes, I did. What observations did you make there of the people you saw? Yep, so immediately I saw um, Eileen Perales, who was uh, sitting off to the side with some facial issues and, and uh, some other injuries, so uh, Father Pat was kind of he was placed in a room and I kind of was helping Eileen a little bit. And then there was also Peggy Pachulis was also in the waiting room already when I got there. Did she have any observable injuries? She had, uh, like her ankle was, was splinted already. She was waiting. And then uh, um, shortly after that, then Benjamin and Elliot Hallmark were also in the kind of the general waiting room and I ended up also seeing them, and then my, my next experience would be is uh, with the different situations in families, it became apparent that unfortunately some families were were split apart and in different injuries. And so um, I was with uh, kind of, there was CAT scans that needed to be done on some of the children. So there were kind of four beds 
And I was, uh, especially with that, you know, Benjamin and Elliot Hallmark, their appearance route, and then it also turned out that Eileen and Ashley Perales also then were kind of waiting CAT scan, so that would have been my next kind of encounter. What injuries did you observe on those individuals? So at, at, at the time, I mean, Ashley had uh, kind of some, as you call it, facial lacerations and major injuries there. And I think you already testified about Eileen. Um, how about Elliot and Benjamin Hallmark? Yeah, so uh, they were both in, uh, at the time they were getting checked out for brain situations. Uh, it was clear Benjamin had a kind of a major fracture uh, in his leg and also a major kind of you know, golf ball kind of coming out of his, by his eyes. And uh, Elliot also then had uh, some injuries. And I'm just going to go through the remainder. If you saw them, or um, either that night or in the following days, um, let me know. And if you okay. just if you know that they were injured, uh, Maria Alvarez Dominguez. Objection. Uh, it's hearsay. It's, just, uh, it's not hearsay. It's asking about his knowledge, not what he heard. It's the so injuries. you may answer the question. Hearsay. Maria was injured. I don't know the full scope of her injuries. Okay, so he just qualified, he doesn't know. This is visibly uncomfortable for, for me to watch him try to do this because you can just tell that this is not something that this person is really emotionally equipped and he's really relying on, um, I guess, his, his faith, I guess, to get him through this. But he alone is just really struggling through this. I can, I, I just, I don't even know if I want to watch Daryl question this guy because I'm not sure I watched it originally and how about Gregorio Romelia Perez she was uh, very 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 severely injured uh, major major issues she, you, could you observe what those injuries were objection uh, uh, hearsay he, he's also stuck between keeping people's privacy and and as you can tell his answers are quite guarded Overruled. You may answer. Uh, pelvis fractures, and uh, she was in uh, rehab for about four months with a uh, uh, still walking with a cane. She still is walking with a cane. That's correct. Lori Logan. Lori uh, sustained some major heart issues, so she had a major procedure on her heart. Marisol Lopez Gutierrez. I don't know the full extent. Marisol was uh, was impacted. She suffered a, I believe, a fracture, wrist fracture, um, some other uh, major soreness. She's she's healing. Adair Lopez Gutierrez. Adair was uh, the car ran over him. Uh, he didn't suffer any major physical injuries, but was impacted. Juan Marquez. Juan uh, suffered a major leg fracture, has had a couple surgeries. David Marquez? Uh, David was, was struck, took on some bruising, but no major, major injuries. Jason Peckloff? Objection, hearsay. Overrule. Amazing. Jason has suffered, suffered a severe concussion and uh, some ankle injuries, an, an ankle injury. Yamalat Perales Alvarez. Objection, hearsay. Overrule. Go ahead and answer. Yamalat was, uh, we very, came very close to losing her. Major, major head trauma. Um, was severely, severely hurt. <coughs> Jose Perales Alvarez. Objection, hearsay. Overrule. Jose also was very severely hurt with leg injuries. He's had. had you guys noticing that he didn't say anything up until this past four or five and now he's here saying the whole thing um almost like he he knows who is more um severely injured he knows he knows these injuries he knows what he did to these people just disgusting uh, about 10 surgeries at this point still and walking with a crutch and Camilla Perez Gonzalez. Objection, hearsay. Overruled. 
Camilla had a, an orthopedic injury. Uh, he's had a number of a couple surgeries. Any cross-exam questions for this witness, sir? I do. Oh my God! Here we go. Buckle up. See. What? I don't have too many questions for you, Father. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you? Do you recall when you knew for sure that you would be testifying in oh this matter? Oh, my manner? God. I, I got an official word on October 1st to plan to be here, I believe, on uh, last Wednesday. And to the best of your knowledge, do you have any reason why you would be testifying on behalf of an injured party if you are not an injured party? Mr. Brown's. He's a witness. Oh, my answer. He's a witness. My, my thought would be that as the pastor, I would have a more wide ranging kind of knowledge of, of different people's situations as a pastor, or some people might, you know, that's what I would assume. But. You testify to observing uh, a, a, quite a few injuries. How can you assess the injuries just by looking at the people? <laughs> He's confused because it doesn't make any sense, and it's funny because it doesn't make any sense. How can I? Okay. Really, Daryl? Really? Really? Seriously, Daryl? Are you seriously going to say that any normal average person can't look at somebody in a splint and say that's an ankle injury? Or look at their face and see a big golf ball? Oh, my gosh. <sighs> but you're not a doctor. Yeah, well, you're not a driver. You clarify what you mean by that. Like, what are you getting at? For, for example, yeah. <laughs> um, getting at if I would, if if I was to see someone injured laying on the ground, I could essentially say, "Oh, it looks like this," mm -hmm. but how that... how can I be certain that that's what it is? So my question is, being that you observed a lot of injuries. How were you able to assess what they were just by looking? Well, the question mischaracterizes his testimony, Thank so you. I'm going to ask that you rephrase. How did you know the injuries just by looking? It still mischaracterizes his testimony. That's not what he said. He was asked about whether he was aware. Yeah, that he observed injuries. So how, he how didn't just he observe them. He observed some, so you need to be specific as what point in time. The injuries that you saw at the hospital, how were you able to say for sure what those injuries were just by observation? Yeah, so some of it is seeing people at the hospital, and then part of it then is, you know, so there's the immediate seeing people in the hospital, and then there's the later times of seeing people in the hospital or seeing people um, recovering in other contexts. So would it be fair to say that you were told those injuries either by medical professionals or by the people? I, exactly. So if people would, would say, this is my injury, uh, I would believe them. If they'd be the hospital, if I see people with crutches, wheelchairs, you know, then, then I would say that's probably accurate. But you didn't know for sure yourself until you were told. Yeah, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not the one diagnosing an injury. I can observe what they say, I can observe what I see, and then 
You know, I see people with uh, yeah. crutches, that, wheelchairs. That's and what I'm I'm like, getting at. There's it, probably yeah. truth there. Do you know, uh, because you testified to seeing those, uh, some of those people after the, uh, the incident, would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you know if any of the people you saw after the incident filed any claims in the matter? Could you clarify by what you mean by claims? Um, did, did they file for uh, um, to be an injured party in the matter, or did they file for any uh, any, uh, any uh, medical bill support or anything of that nature? <coughs> to your knowledge, do you recall any of that? We we certainly told as many people as possible to get involved in the Waukesha parade support and other means of, of help. I, I'm not, I can't speak specifically for each person what they did or did not do. Uh, can you explain to the jury what, what you mean by uh, the support that you are referring to? Was, is that, was that like a group formed or was that sort of like an event of a GoFundMe account or, or something like that? Can you give me? And here's Daryl again, trying to bring all of us down to his level below a piece of garbage. Um, people did not financially become financially advantaged because of your crimes. And I say crimes, plural. You committed many, many crimes that day, many more than 76. And personally, I think. They charged you with that to keep it, you know, clean and easy to prove and and so forth. But the victims of your crimes recuperating the money that it would cost them to recover from your crimes, that is not financial advantage. Clear, clarity on that? Yeah, there was the, the Waukesha Parade Fund that was, I think, an international type of thing. There was, uh, you know, our parish had a fund. There were GoFundMes. There were any number of different different things. There were different encounters to allow people to come together and talk about what had happened and, and seek uh, start of healing from the emotional part of it. And, and by international, that would be assuming worldwide. That'd be fair to say? Yes. So it would be fair to say that there were uh, financial interests attached to this incident. Objection is how Grounds. it relates to this witness's testimony. Grounds. Sustained. I should try to answer that, the, the question. No, I sustained it. You don't have to okay. answer that. Right. You can rephrase, but as it relates to how it was asked in this witness, I'm sustaining it. Well, it was actually because he referred to some GoFundMe's being set up and anything. So my question was, um, being that the, it was a wide ranging scope by, by him saying international. What's your question? I sustained the objection. Was, was there uh, any financial interests attached to this incident. And I'm going to object for the same reasons before. Rounds. It's vague. Even the guy who sold the ring video to the news did nothing wrong. Okay? All the people at the parade could have sold all of their video to the news. And I wouldn't see that as well. In this day and age, we all have video cameras. We walk around with them. We walk around with them in our hands all the time. And even though I am probably the least married to my phone person that I've seen, I will walk around with a with a phone that has no SIM card in it, just like a, the old-fashioned MP3 players to walk with. Because I have no reason to be tied to but we are all walking around with this and one time I was at the dog park and I wished I would have had the camera on because I would have been a TikTok star 
because this thing was so funny. This officer came up. I didn't talk to him. One of the, my neighbors did. And he said, have you seen this guy? And he showed him the phone. And, and my neighbor was looking around like, are you crazy? And it was the guy who was sitting next to me on the, on the ground. I was sitting on a bench and the guy was sitting on the ground. And the police were looking for the guy. They asked us if we had ever seen him. He was sitting right there. Hilarious. Hilarious. But yeah, I would have sold that stuff in a in a cube a second if I had the camera on. Missed opportunities. Unclear. <laughs> Overly broad. What do you want to cut? In the form of a question. Ugh. So gross. Any idea how uh, how much money was raised? for the, uh, I guess I would say, GoFundMe's groups. You know, and I'm sorry, because his, his questions were stupid, so I don't mind cutting into it. Also, like, news media, when, when we used to have, like, the nightly news and stuff, those, that, that was, those were more, more gainfully employed. They, they used to have commercials so that they could fund going out and getting those stories so that we would watch it was it was literally a program for profit okay news is for we're all living in a different age now I, I don't know what journalism is anymore but you know we we put stuff on there if I saw something newsworthy there's there's apps that people put it on Daryl committing a crime should not gate you're the one committing the crime if they watch you do it and and catch it but these people aren't benefiting by going to recuperate medical bills because you ran over their body and broke their legs so that they're on canes for the rest of their lives. It, 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 you know, have you, he has no heart. He has no soul. Support. Objection as it relates to this witness. Grounds. <coughs> Grounds. Well, I'll allow it a little bit of leeway as it potentially could relate to bias, not of this witness, he made no claim, but go ahead, if he knows. Subject to you following it up with other, I guess, witnesses later on. I know, uh, so the Catholic community of Waukesha had uh, an opportunity because people wanted to give, and so there, there were $73,000 that came into the fund that I'm aware of, the Catholic community of Waukesha that we dispersed uh, in different ways. There's still, I think, 3,000 left that's for kind of community healing events. What the, the end of the, what GoFundMe's reached, what the Waukesha Foundation Fund reached, I, I don't know. But I know the Catholic community of Waukesha was 73,000. Yeah, specific, I couldn't say 73 what, but 73,000, I think. And, and did that go straight towards the, the, the victims to help them in how does that anyway. help your case daryl so an example would be you know there are many people that uh could no they could not work because of uh their injuries. being hurt or they had situations where a loved one was severely hurt and they had to be at home uh, or going to the hospitals nursing homes and taking care of them so there was uh and I, I have no idea the ins and outs of, uh, you know, payment of hospital bills and things like that. But I, I know people were, you know, they could not go to work because of, of some of these scenarios. And You stated you didn't see the vehicle approaching at the time when it got to where you were. You were. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. It was very close to me when I saw it. About how close to you did the vehicle come? The, the vehicle was on my left side. I saw it probably You know, very close to when it was hitting people. Me, I would say. Hitting people. He's 
when it, when it was hitting people, when the when you were running over people, that is how close you were with your vehicle when he finally saw you. This poor man is struggling so badly. And if we were there as cheerleaders, we would say, we would help him. We would stand up and chant that. And I don't know how those victims sat in that courtroom and did that too. But let's, let's back up and review. Let's say that you commit a crime. How close were you to me when I committed my crime? Can you describe me committing my crime and how far away so that you can prove that you were close enough to see me commit my crime? I mean, how are these questions? Is this going to be another iconic Daryl Brooks uh, attorney at law? Uh, you know, something that's going to go into the Harvard Law School, be a whole class of your attorneys where they learn to ask, who is you? <laughs> and what's the subject matter jurisdiction proven, uh, even though it's proven? <laughs> and where is the injured party, even though they're parading them in front of you and asking specifically, were you injured so you're an injured party? Yes. And then he just totally ignores that because he's cherry picking. Is this all going to go into a new Harvard Law School class? I think it is. To my left. Uh, Torturing this so you were you on the right side of the street? At that I was on the, point? the right the right side of the road. So it would be fair to say it was on the opposite side of the road from you. It was on my left. Where on the left? In in he said he you know, didn't he know a picture of the road, like times. point to where it was on my left. I could not say that it was on my left. Did it come pretty close to you? Oh my god! At any time when it was passing you, the car did not hit me. It was on my my left. Okay. Uh, you refer to it. He keeps repeating the same answer because that is the only detail he can give you. He is not going to give you details that he is not confident with. Keep asking. Keep asking. You're going to get the same answer. Just like when they ask me what I weigh, I say what I say on the driver's license. I've said that ever since I was 22. That's probably... <laughs> I'm not as good as person as this guy is. That's, that's the difference. But as a car, as you just said, was it a car? Was it an SUV? What What was the vehicle? Oh my God! I would describe it as an SUV to be specific. Any reason why you would say car? Objection, argument. Grounds. Overruled. You may answer. For me, people that know me, I'm not a, a car person, so car is a wide ranging uh, descriptor to me. Would well, it be fair to say you wouldn't call a bus a car, though, right? I wouldn't call an SUV a bus, stupid. If <laughs> sustained, you don't need to answer that one. Thank you. When, when asked uh, earlier, when you were asked about um, if you saw anyone else like on the ground or something to that effect. You said as time went on, you, you had observed someone else laying on the ground. Can you explain what you mean by as time went on? Was that a significant time that, that passed or a very short time that passed at that point? Do you recall? Shorter than you stopping to help them after you ran them over. <sighs> My testimony is I, there were three people that were right in front of me. And I really spent time, Father Pat then was taken to the side as he waited for a squad to come. I really stayed with, with Maria because uh, there weren't a lot of people around there first. So I really kind of focused on staying with her. From looking up and waiting, you know, there'd be officers or, you know, different medical personnel, whether they were, I can't say, you know, what type of personnel there were, people would come and check and, and kind of evaluate. But I could see other kind of pockets of people. Uh, did you observe the other pockets of people that weren't with your group being struck at any at any point in time? The only experience that that I saw was was our particular group. At the time of the incident, I had no idea what had taken place behind us. And would it be fair to say you had no idea what had taken place in front of your group? I, as I stated, I, I 
only saw what I saw. At any time when the vehicle was passing you, were you uh, able to see into the vehicle? The vehicle was going very fast. So I, I, I would not have had a picture of who was driving the vehicle. But you can't estimate a good speed that the vehicle may have been traveling. My estimation was the, the, the vehicle was traveling faster than I would usually see a, a car traveling down Main Street. So over 25 miles an hour. So would that be uh, that you would, you said traveling faster than you would see a, a car traveling down Main Street, would that be in terms of if there was a parade actively going on or even without any traffic? Really? Really, Daryl? A parade goes one mile an hour. One mile an hour. And we verified this, you know, with people who do parades all the time and plan parades and teach kids how to march in parades and bands. One mile, one to two, one, two at the very tops. Maybe those dancers probably move a little faster because they're leaping and doing their dances. But you were going 20 to 30 times that while you ran over people and mangled their little legs and gave them head injuries and lifelong pain. I think on Main Street. If I was at Main Street right now watching cars go past, you know, if I was just... On the sidewalk, I would say that the car and the parade was traveling faster than those cars would be traveling. I'm saying in terms of even if there was no parade, if it was just a regular, just a normal, just a normal day. Normal day. That, that's what I'm saying. On a normal day, the car was traveling, in my estimation, faster than you would see a car traveling on a normal day. And you, you weren't able to get any description of the driver of the vehicle? Not at all, no. Could you at any point tell if there was uh, more than one person in the vehicle? I would not have been able to, no. Do you recall being interviewed by any law enforcement at that time? I was at the, the hospital, as I indicated before that night, and there was a, a law enforcement personnel person that kind of ducked into one of the rooms and asked, you know, a couple questions what I would have seen or... So, so very brief, not, not extensive, uh, long extensive type interview, but very brief, just a few questions? In the hospital that evening, yes, there was a uh, law enforcement that was a brief interview. Did you give any, uh, or were you interviewed by any law enforcement uh, after that night? I was, I was not interviewed until getting a subpoena about uh, this particular case. Um, do you recall when you received that subpoena? I can't say a specific date. I can say it, you know, after that first one, October 1st was when I got the official, you know, to report, to testify to the case. I, I can't remember what, what date it was uh, before that. Were you in, in contact with any law enforcement about this incident leading up to the October 1st uh, subpoena that you received? 
not before I talked to the the DA that uh, that that first time. And do you recall what DA that was? Um, it was Su Susan and excuse me, uh, Susan. Uh, made a record reflect that there was a right hand gesture towards the prosecution table. I believe the witness identified our district attorney, Susan Opper, as the Susan. The record can reflect that. And was that uh, October 1st time the only conversation you had with attorney Opper? October 1st was I, when I received the notification that I was to, to report to court. I uh, spoke with uh, uh, Susan you know, sometime in the, the month before we spoke once. But at the, uh, in the month before the October 1st subpoena? <laughs> so, so October 1st is when I formally got the subpoena that I was to come in. It would have been sometime in September where I was you know, notified to come in and talk to the DA. So I talked to the DA once. And at that time in September, you weren't yet subpoenaed. I, I was, how do I say this? This would be a point of clarification in the sense of, I, I believe that I was subpoenaed to come in and talk to the, the DA. I, I'm not sure if that's a subpoena or that's, you know, what the correct wording is. Um, I was, you know, told to, to come in and interview with the DA. And talk to the district. I'm not sure if that's Okay. So in other words, <laughs> he knows less than most people. He, he has, this is not even on his radar of, of what he's supposed to know as a person. He follows the instruction he's giving you. This would have been completely out of this guy's total element, okay? He receives something, he's told to go and talk to somebody, and he, he does it. That, that's it. That's it, Daryl. There's no conspiracy here. There doesn't need to be. You committed all of your crimes in front of thousands of witnesses who had hundreds of videotapes going, plus CCTV from businesses, and you did it in the most public place possible at the time that most people would be gathered. That's a subpoena, but I, I believe it would be more than come in if you want to. I, I believe it was kind of like, you need to come in, not if you want, you can, if not, don't. I'm not sure what the, the terminology for that is, but that's how I would take it. That's a subpoena. Um, no, that's, that's not a subpoena. The oh, subpoena is when you actually get... Are we getting educated? The subpoena paperwork by mail or I, I don't... Mr. Brooks, you need to ask a question. Uh, <laughs> no, because you're trying to define something which would be testifying, which you cannot do at this time. So the jury will disregard his last comment. But go ahead and ask a question of this witness. Thank you. She is something else. Oh my God, she is something else? Wow. Mr. Wow. Brooks, that was inappropriate. Oh my God. Wow is right. Do you have any other questions yes, for this I do. witness? Yes, Please I ask do. them. During your um, conversations with Attorney Opper uh, in September and October 1st, when you, you received the subpoena, at, at that time, were you uh, provided the complaint in this issue? What, what do you mean by complaint? The complaint would be a reference to uh, the charges in this matter. Paperwork that would state the charges. He has no idea. Grounds. Oh, or else he may answer if, he, if he's able. 
He has no idea. I mean, to me, seeing what happened and seeing everyone that was hurt, no. to me it was very obvious what, what this was about. Did you see at any time any paperwork, paperwork related to the charges in this incident? I look so confused. Oh my god. So there have been the, you know, the subpoena sheet that would have had... Uh, and he's trying so hard to answer Daryl's absolutely stupid, irrelevant question that does not lend to his defense whatsoever. Whatsoever. You know, oh your name god. and you know, <laughs> a number of different... What do you mean my name? What, what are you referring to? Oh my god. First of all, I believe you it would have said Daryl Brooks on it. Um, are you aware that I don't identify by that name? Are you aware that that's testifying? Sorry. So, that's your name. Even this guy's laughing at So, out. is that what your subpoena said? Was that the language of your subpoena? The logistics? We've been down this road under 906.11, Mr. Brooks. You're not, I, I need you to ask a relevant question to this witness. That was relevant. He said what was on his no, subpoena. No, we've you've talked at length about the subpoena. So under 906.11, move on to a new topic, please. Daryl, Daryl and his island of hair that's seceding from the continent that we should probably just, can we just take this here and put it back here? where it's going away <laughs> that would at least make some sense but we can't because you know then then the absolute obvious horns that daryl has proving you know what even even the devil doesn't want daryl even the devil doesn't want daryl he is too low for for hell in my opinion <sighs> He's gonna have a temper tantrum soon. I think we're working up. Are to you one. aware of who the plaintiff is in this matter? Oh my god. Section relevance. <laughs> oh my god. Let me answer. I believe that, uh, that that you would be, or excuse me, you you're the I, defendant. I would be the plaintiff. You, excuse me. My... Okay, listen to him. This this poor man. This poor man who is who's a priest. He's got he's got a whole world of knowledge, but is completely divorced from any of this because all of his knowledge, all of his efforts, all of his life energy goes towards things that that are in the church that he wouldn't even need to know. He wouldn't even have any kind of requirement in the very slightest to know uh, anything about the legal system because it wouldn't be on his radar. It, he wouldn't have to touch it because he's, in, he's entrenched 100% in this other world, which he probably has a vast knowledge of. He, he's obviously a very intelligent person, but his the knowledge and experience in the legal system is is very small and he's trying so hard to understand what is what is Daryl trying to ask well, what do you mean I'm the plaintiff uh, like like look at his stupid face <laughs> and his liar lines accentuating the horns around the island of seceding, seceding hair from the continent <laughs> I mean, you're the you're the defendant I believe the plaintiff would be. <laughs> he doesn't know. Do you know, do you know who the plaintiff is? You know, all those who were, were hurt under the title of the state of Wisconsin. That's how I would. That's how I would identify it. That's how you would identify it. So. That's his knowledge base. It's appropriate. Do you know of anybody who was hurt? His. Excuse me. Didn't we just go through an hour, hour of the people we knew were hurt and then you accused him of not knowing how hurt? Okay, look, his, his knowledge base and that answer is totally appropriate. 
totally appropriate, represented by the state of Wisconsin. Oh my gosh, so totally. Do you know anybody who was hurt? Did I identify it as the plaintiff? Oh my gosh. Relevance. Grounds. And it missed test. It, it missed He's really not sure what. But the plaintiff is. He kind of guessed. He gave an assumption. Sustained. He he did. Foundation. He did answer the question though. Sustained. Next question. <laughs> it's out of his realm of of true knowledge and expertise. Leave him alone. Bully. Freaking bully. So to the best of your knowledge, the plaintiff would be the representative of the people. Yes. You know what? Sustain. Yeah. You're now asking him to make a legal conclusion, which I will not have him do. Thank you. It's also not relevant. No. Yeah, shake your dumb head. Mm. Do you know if any injured party who claims to be the plaintiff in his matter. You already Just asked relevance. that. Grounds. Sustained. Mr. Brooks, under 90611, please move on to a new topic. Are you aware that only an injured party can be the plaintiff in this? No. No. Incident. Yeah. He couldn't work out plaintiff and defendant until he sorted it through his head. He doesn't have this as his area of expertise. He doesn't, he doesn't know. Stop bullying him. Okay. He's, uh, and you certainly don't have any idea what his area of expertise is because his area of expertise, expertise has something to do with the good in people, which you have zero, Daryl. Sustain also misstates the law. You don't have to answer that. Mr. Brooks, new topic or under 90611, I will close the cross-examination. Look at him. How does that mischaracterize the law? An injured party right. has to um, make the claim. You haven't asked a question. I will give you one more opportunity. Don't question me. Please ask a question of this witness. The jury will disregard his statement as it mischaracterizes the law. And he is not testifying. He's asking questions at this time. Are you aware that the state of Wisconsin is an entity and cannot claim to be an injured party in this matter? Objection. Grounds. All right, sustained. All right. Uh, the, your cross exam is now closed under 90611. Um, does the state have any redirect for this Briefly. Please. Go ahead. Sir, prior to the red SUV coming through your group, did you ever hear of horn honking? Objection. Overruled. You may answer, Objection. sir. Objection. Hearsay. It's not hearsay. I, I personally hearsay. didn't, but. That's fine. Now I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 15 again and ask that that be published to the jury. This has already been admitted into evidence. Go ahead. Objection. What was the, what was the answer to the last question? The record speaks for itself. Next, the witness can answer the annotations. <clears throat> And again, you previously identified the individuals um, in the Catholic communities of Waukesha box. In looking at that box again, were all those people on the road as part of the Catholic communities of Waukesha when the red SUV went through? Objection, leading the witness. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Definitely, 100%. And we can take that exhibit off the screen. One final question. When you spoke with District Attorney Susan Opper in your meeting that you testified to, did she ever tell you what to say today? Objection. Hearsay. Um, overruled. It was a hearsay. You questioned his credibility. You questioned his talking to the state. He may answer the question. The only reason why I'm objecting, Your Honor, is because 
Your objection is noted. Attorney it's, Opper is not asking the question, so how would the Attorney Daisy know which Mr. Opper Brooks, said? I'm not going to explain the legal procedures. Go ahead, ask the question. You may answer when she does. Do you recall the question? Yeah, yeah I do. She, she did not. Okay. No. Did she tell you to tell the truth today? Objection. Relevancy. Oh, sustain this to the form of the question. <laughs> Everything that you've testified today, is it truthful? Objection. Hearsay. Oh. Oh, How is that hearsay? Yes. Nothing further. Thank you. Right, it's like, it's like, now. that totally rubbed her the wrong way. Like, she's like, hearsay? Like, that's not even, he's spinning the game board wheel. Ugh. Look at stupid, oh my gosh, with those, like, does he think he's doing something with the jury? by making those ridiculous face. I would like to get through one more witness, but I want to take a short comfort break uh, for one. So I'll rise for the jury. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Oh my gosh. Shake your, oh my gosh. What a bobblehead. What a bobblehead. All right, like and subscribe if you wish. Please comment. I love the comments. Uh, I know I didn't go over too many of them now. And then we'll see who's coming up next time after this break. I don't recognize that person. I'm not even sure. Maybe. No, I don't know him yet. Okay, so we'll we'll, we'll just keep muscling through this, this uh, thing and laugh and reflect. Thank you very much for joining. Patty Joe. Bye.